we generally don't see tamil anchors moving into a english sports channel and at that point in time star sports called me back i wasn't doing that season of super singer when they said you know why don't you come and audition for us i said i don't know anything about sport i know that with this new role that i've taken but i look up to people like priyanka chopra right. who've done the unthinkable so when they can do it we can do it too was they didn't judge me especially the super seniors chika and bibi so i will always be grateful to them because they said don't worry ask me a question even if it doesn't make sense i will answer it in a way that i don't put you down in front of the camera my mother did what she put me in six classes a week so i did dance music tango painting casio tennis as well as shloka reciting there's only 7 days in a week exactly what my father used to tell her <laughs> one of our shows the female co-anchor got sick so my mother pulled me aside and said you're anyway not shy of the stage you dance you sing you do all of that on stage anyway i'll give you 5000 rupees right okay. so i just went there to earn 5000 rupees that my mom never paid me i want to say That's till right. date my mother owes me that 5000 it's now recorded you correct. have to pay her auntie now yeah correct okay with interest uh when i feel a little low in terms of self esteem i just call my dad and i'm like appa how am i looking and he's like you look better than aishwarya rai <laughs> wow. i'm like okay that's all i want to listen to mumbai is slightly more professional just in the way they work than chennai is chennai is more family ha right with family you don't have that much of professionalism <laughs> In this podcast I'm very very happy to welcome Bhavna. Hello, welcome. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Yeah. You're doing a wonderful job first of all. It's very difficult I know to switch languages and move seamlessly from Tamil to English. So a lot of people have always asked me why don't you do a full-fledged English interview? So thank you for giving me the opportunity to I'm, address I'm, the audience. I'm 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 glad language. that I had this opportunity to do because uh first of all one the introduction I just said Bhavna because you have so many tags in front of you like it just goes on. It's amazing to meet a multifaceted person and talk to them and I have a lot of things to ask. So let me just start with your first audition experiences. So was there anything like that because uh, I am sure you had a different background and uh, so let's take us through that first audition. Okay, I'll, I'll, let's take a walk down memory lane. Yes. Um so my mother a lot of people don't know this or some of them know and some of them have forgotten. My mother and my aunt used to have this production house called Viba and uh, they are the pioneers of a lot of these event productions that happened in the late 90s and early 2000s. They did something called Miss JJ Uh, it was a beauty pageant for the first time on television in Tamil, mm-hmm. and uh, they have the uh, Miss Chennai product as one of their flagship products that they did for many years. So one of them is Chennai's is Trisha, uh, okay. so on and so forth. You have a lot of other personalities who become big models and stuff like that, who've uh, gone on to represent uh, Chennai on the national stage as well. So um, they sort of, you know. Um, created this wonderful world for me so when i was very young in my pre teens and my teens i used to see a lot of these beauty pageants the way these women spoke walked how well groomed they were at the end of the process so my mother and my aunt vidyan shobha which is where vibha comes from they were actively involved in grooming these women So when there were little two little girls at home I was a single child at home and then my aunt had one girl child as well okay. so two little children as girls when we grew up we watched this beautiful world it was full of glitz and glamour and i think while observing these multiple pageant entries all of these gorgeous women we picked a little trait from each one of them and i think that has helped groom me in the process so i always knew how to be on stage how to walk i used to be one of these you know like flower girls the trail at the to poetry you know you give these sashes right yeah. so i used to be those flower girls and those helpers for my mother because she wouldn't have anybody to step in for her in the last minute um and uh, through the process i used to listen to the mc's talk i used to listen to all of these uh, contestants answer uh, so it wasn't very new to me and parallelly what my mother did was she put me in six classes a week i still remember she thought extra curricular activities were very important so i did dance music tango painting casio tennis as well as shloka reciting so there's only 7 days in a week exactly what my father used to tell her <laughs> <laughs> but she never listened but today i thank her 
because if I hadn't pursued all of those classes, I wouldn't have these little skills that you know you spoke about. So that really helped me. And uh, when I wanted to get into the media, it was just completely by accident. Now there are a lot of these memes saying, "What is this accident? Can this <laughs> happen to me as well?" But yeah. honestly, that's how it was for me because I did engineering. Yes. And then MBA. Yeah. And I was working in a corporate company. My dad had big dreams for me. He said, "My daughter is going to be the CEO of a company, <laughs> just like every other parent." Okay. He thought his daughter was the best. Mm-hmm. Right. So he said, you know, she's going to rule the corporate world. She's going to be the next Indra Nooyi. Poor father of mine had his heart broken because after 6 months of doing that, my mother, I was working in Bangalore. My mother asked me to come back and said, "Why don't you pursue your dance? You've not done your Arangetram yet." Mm-hmm. You know, just an opportunity for her to bring her only daughter back home. Avala oh, na. Oh, yeah. So she got me back home. and uh, then she said um, you know pursue dance take a break you've studied so much and just like four years engineering and one year mba she's like take a break you've studied so much pursue some passion and at that point in time one of her shows the female co anchor got sick in the last moment okay. and the male co anchor the male anchor at that point in time said you know there are 200 awards and i can't do this all by myself I need a co-anchor to support me mm. so that I'll have a little bit of breathing space. So my mother pulled me aside and said, "You're anyway not shy of the stage. You dance, mm. you sing, you do all of that on stage anyway. I'll give you 5000 rupees." And that at that point in time 5000 is a lot of money, right? And I'm talking about uh, 2007. Oh, 2008 okay. I think. Yeah. Mm. So she said, uh, "I'll give you 5000 rupees if you'll just come and read out these names." And she trained me a little bit mm. on how to sort of use the mic and all of that. that was my audition and i didn't know it right okay. so i just went there to earn 5000 rupees that my mom never paid me i want to say That's till bad. date my mother owes me that 5000 it's now recorded you correct. have to pay her auntie now yeah. correct okay with interest <laughs> with oh, that i'm not getting into that part but <laughs> yeah um so but, but what it did for me was there is an rj called niladri okay. who was then starting a channel called chennai live 104.8 mm. He saw me on stage and said, "This girl has a really nice voice, I, and her English diction is pretty good. So why don't we consider her?" And then he got my number from the male co-anchor, who I have to really be grateful for because my mother, without realizing, had launched me. Mm. But this man, Mr. Neela Kanthit, was the one who gave my number to that RJ and helped me kickstart my career. Wow! <laughs> so uh, on stage, first audition, come. uh not paid <laughs> job <laughs> correct so but we are glad that it might be an accident but to have such a talent in our industry is like it's a good accident for us also thank you baby that's really <laughs> sweet of you <laughs> and so uh next i want to um, ask about the evolving process so as a human we don't take decisions what we have taken in our 20s so we see yes. things differently <laughs> our perspective changes and everything everything changes after a point so let's talk about bhavna 20s and bhavna 30s so how have you evolved in this uh, years i think there's been so much growth honestly the one thing that's remained constant is i've been impulsive in my 20s and i'm impulsive <laughs> in my 30s okay. but just in terms of anger management mm. or patience right. and i think the most important area where i feel i've grown is kindness because in when i was in my 20s i didn't really think beyond myself and my family or maybe my close circle of friends um the the ability to look outside and really help somebody or be kind to somebody just say good morning when you meet them or have a smile on your face these are things that i think you learn as you grow up either you learn them as a child which was taught to me by my parents but just kindness in terms of making somebody's day 10% better i strive to do that now i never did that in my 20s i would be not that i would be unkind to anyone not that i would be rude but i i would be neutral okay i'd say hello and then move on but today i will go and say hello how are you you know you're looking really nice and it's it's great to see you or i would go that one extra mile because um i have been fortunate in so many instances i'd like to pay back to the world or the society or the people around me so that i feel is one area i've grown second area is i feel i used to take rejection very badly like most people in their 20s you feel very upset i would shut myself in my room um i would not talk to someone 
I would I would obviously take it out on my parents the most because I'd be like na sapadla you know I don't want to eat and this didn't come to me and you know why why didn't I get it I I think I've worked really hard for this but today I take it with a smile I take rejection with a smile because I now know that if something doesn't come my way something bigger is due to come my way okay. something better okay. is due to come my way I've realized that because I've gone through it was there any incident that you know uh, that made you realize this like if I, thank god i didn't get that because i got this yes star sports is one of those okay. areas for me because i've always i always felt a little stagnant in entertainment beyond a point mm-hmm. what can i do beyond this you know um where is the level where i can step up because i never wanted to act uh, acting was not something i was keen on and i was married when i even before i got my big break on television So um my husband said look I'm okay with anything you do but watching your romance a guy on screen I don't know if I'll be comfortable See Devya I got married when I was um, 25 okay. in 2011 So um my husband just said I'm absolutely fine with anything you do and I'm here to support you all the way um but I don't know if I can watch your romance a guy on screen okay. Initially I was like yeah why you know it's just acting right and then i realized that it's not something i would like watching him do as well so if i have to put myself in his place i understand the family that he comes from and uh, the kind of um, industry he works in and just the person that he is and i thought it was a fair ask considering both our personalities there's nothing wrong with romancing a guy on screen and uh, i have so much respect for a lot of my friends who are actors but it didn't work for us as a couple mm-hmm. and uh, i said okay that's fair and i won't now i think after like 13 years of marriage he may be okay or he may still not be okay but um, acting was not something i really wanted to do so when i was at a stage in my career where i had done a lot of interviews and mm-hmm. shows on stage stuff behind the camera stuff i was really wondering what's in it for me next how can i step up is this the end of the road for me should i get into corporate training should i do something else as an extension of my career and a, a few things that were bound to come my way didn't so i had a few disappointments as well um as i was dealing with it thankfully because of friends and family i then got star sports it just literally came and fell on my lap i was in dubai i remember with my husband he had a small assignment in dubai so we moved to dubai for 6 months Okay. And at that point in time Star Sports called me back. I wasn't doing that season of Super Singer. And um when they said, you know, why don't you come in audition for us? I said, I don't know anything about sport. And then my husband and dad said, we are here. We'll teach you. You're a quick learner and we know you're a hard worker. So, you know, why don't you take this journey and see where the road takes you. Okay. And uh 6 years and i'm yes. still going strong in sport which i really very love. very strong <laughs> and you it's my lord of us like we generally don't see tamil anchors moving into a english sports channel and that never happened and to see you step up your game there and we were like wow it was a very good surprise for us like we could uh, connect with you when you were there uh, star sports was there and we used to watch now we had someone from us there so it was easy to get connected and it was a wonderful thing that i'm glad you took that up and you're going very strong and it inspires us every time we see you on the screen thank you the well so sweet of you to say i know that with this new role that i've taken i also have a responsibility towards young girls right. who want to take up sport who want to be presenters in that field right. um i would say it hasn't been easy but i look up to people like priyanka chopra right. who've done the unthinkable so when they can do it we can do it too we Why just not? have to chart our own course which is what i'm trying to do yeah uh, so uh, when you are in the industry there's a common talk uh, that uh, anyone needs luck so let's talk about this luck versus talent yeah. so how do you see uh, this theory uh, நிஜமாலுமே ஒருத்தவங்களுக்கு லக் இருந்தால் தான் அது ஒர்க் அவுட் ஆகுமா அது வந்து ஒரு ஹார்ட் ஒர்க்னால கிடைக்கிற விஷயமா ஹவு டு யூ சி திஸ் தியோரி ஐ டூ பிலீவ் இன் லக் ஐ டெஃபினெட்லி பிலீவ் இன் லக் ஐ ஐ திங்க் தட் யூ ஹாவ் டு புட் யோர் ஹெட் டவுன் அண்ட் யூ ஹாவ் டு ஒர்க் ரியலி ஹார்ட் அண்ட் ஒன் டே வென் இட்ஸ் யோர் டைம் யூ ஹாவ் டு பி ரெடி பட் 
when does the time come when there's that little bit of luck that favors you very interestingly because you asked me this question i'll tell you a story about virat kohli in one of his uh, rare interviews he talks about how he was he had a really bad patch in his career um after under 19 cricket where he didn't think he was going to make it into the indian national team he was a part of this game where he hadn't gotten a chance at all throughout the series and before that match everybody said you know what this boy has been sitting in the sidelines forever right give him an opportunity let him go play and the coach came up to him and said you can play but you will play out of your comfort zone you will open the innings for in, uh, for this particular match so he said okay i'll open and in that match india batted second had india batted first the national selector would not have been there so the national selector came and sat 5 minutes before virat kohli opened the innings he hit a 100 and the national selector saw it i'm getting goosebumps the national selector saw it and said this boy will be in the india squad play with the big guns in the next series so tell me somebody like virat kohli who have that talent needed that little bit of luck and that's what happened so i think that we have to obviously marry talent to hard work but that opportunity is driven by 1% luck luck i i believe it and uh, so you spoke about your family like we had a call also so tell us how important is your family like how important uh, talking about the support of the family so how do you see that support made you reach this a uh, place yeah. so take us through your family and their support i'm nothing without my family and uh, they are the beginning middle and end of me that's what i would say we we are a very small family i'm an only child my husband is an only child uh, my i'm very close to my mother's side of the family also close to my father's side but slightly more close to my It's mother's side there. of the family yeah. because i grew up with my grandparents In fact I decided to get married because my tata was sick and he said you know before I leave this world I want to see you married and I only got married because of that so sometimes I tell my husband you're really lucky he asked me sometimes my husband says I'm super unlucky that he asked you <laughs> but you know um uh, but I mean truth be told um they have been the pillars of strength my absolute rocks when i have a great day i want to call my mother at 2 am in the morning and she'll be there to pick up my call uh when i feel a little low in terms of self esteem i just call my dad and i'm like appa how am i looking and he's like you look better than aishwarya rai <laughs> and i'm like okay that's all i want to listen to and i think it's the same um i i speak to my father and my father in law and i are best buds we talk about cricket we talk about life uh we joke together we send each other like whatsapp messages my husband and i are best friends um we share a lot of things which is very private because he's a private person so i don't talk about the things we do in public but we have a great camaraderie and friendship as well um so my family is is extremely important to me and they are make or break for me okay. <laughs> and i also wanted to ask this so wh- what made you or why did you uh, keep your uh, personal life very very private was there a conscious decision or <laughs> it just happened or how is it 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 is a conscious decision it was is and will be a conscious decision um because of the kind of person i'm married to which i absolutely love by the way i think that opposites do attract and uh, so much of my life is public and for their consumption so i believe no, and and anch- as anchors we're blessed because we're not like actors whose lives are then you know torn apart and everything they do is scrutinized we are so much better but even so you know i put myself out there so much on youtube on instagram on twitter on bare social media channels i feel like i want to keep one part one percentage uh, or one chunk of my life private and that's the time i share with my husband i still put a lot of lot of or, or i still put more than what he would like <laughs> okay. on social media but it's only on special days yes. anniversaries or mm-hmm. birthdays where i feel i feel i really like to share my love for him to the world or you know just i i'd like to bring in some positive wishes for him on a special day or on a special day that's the only time i share it he is extremely private he not that he is an introvert he is an extrovert with his family and friends he's the life of the party when he knows people around him but he doesn't feel like his life 
needs to be public and i i think he it still bothers him when people troll you or people say things that are not very pleasant because he doesn't understand why people would be so mean like if you don't like somebody don't say anything mm-hmm. or you know say i don't like your work but why would they talk about your physical attributes why would they talk about your voice or your body why would they look at you like that so he doesn't get it he's not on social media my yeah. husband is one of those few rare beings i couldn't not, find him yeah. on the instagram he's not on social media he doesn't check my instagram if somebody tells him that your wife has put something of yours then we took one he come home and he be like can you just show me your profile <laughs> i want to see what you put you know why are you putting this? it will just go away in 24 hours and i'll be like yes it's a story it's just funny so i put it you know i i'd like to remind people that there's a man in my life <laughs> so yeah but that's why i keep that that part of my life private so it's been 12 13 years It's been thirteen years. 13 It's going to be thirteen this December, but twenty eleven is when we got married. So um, every time, no, when we talk to couple, they say, uh, "Are you bored?" Is it say or something yeah. like that? So what is the one thing you do to keep that uh, bond alive? To keep the chemistry. To keep the chemistry going. <laughs> and what's your love language? Oh, that's a cool question. Now, um, so I think distance makes the heart grow fonder for sure. My mother will always say that. you know you guys are never under the same roof for a prolonged <laughs> period of time he travels a lot i travel like crazy yeah. so when we're together we try and do date nights and uh, we try and do alone time together even when we do vacations we can't be alone with each other in a vacation for more than a week so we love to travel with friends but we try and do the first four days together okay so okay. we do you know the first four days where we're doing you know just stuff the two of us want to do then we want to call friends because we're like hey what is vacation without friends or family right so yeah those are the things and um, what i love is what i love about our relationship is um, the fact that it is absolutely normal right you call each other a couple of times you check on each other you're there for each other you have each other's backs and you're each other's biggest cheerleaders right i am so in awe of certain qualities that my husband has and i'm sure that he loves certain qualities that i have and i think as long as you're in awe of the other person or you respect something or you admire something in your partner that love will be there only when you lose that admiration or that awe factor or the respect does the love decrease and i'm not saying that we are romeo and juliet in you know we we are always like oh kana chella mo cuti we're not like that we're very normal where we fight we won't talk to each other you know there will be disagreements it's a normal marriage and i wouldn't have it any other way <laughs> Uh, so what should a couple uh, do before uh, bringing a new life into uh, their i mean new a baby into their life uh-huh. or how <clears throat> responsible should they be before entering into that phase you know you asked me a 20s versus 30s question i would have given you a completely different answer in my 20s <laughs> these are be my answer in my 30s in fact late 30s um see i believe today right if you want to bring a child into your life you have to be so ready for it in my 20s i would have said you know what it's just an addition right it's not going to it's going to be a change but something that we'll get used to and both of you should want the child but in my 30s as you grow older i always feel that women find it harder to welcome a new addition into the family because you're in a different phase in life not just career career you can always get it back even after a child a child is never a stumbling block to a career i believe that i believe that people work when they are 9 months pregnant they just take a 5 month break and come back and that 5 month break can happen anyway you can break your leg and have a 5 month break so i've seen mandira baby for example come back to work after 3 months of delivery so women have done that and uh, it's possible to do it it depends on what kind of mother you want to be but just mentally right to have that sort of change i think you need to this just like how if i was single and i had to choose a partner now i would have so much more criteria than i would have in my 20s it's the same thing i think with a child like you really have to be ready and you'll have to time it correctly and both of you you and your partner have to be in sync i think life gets a lot more complicated with these decisions as you grow older is it scary which part of it like uh 
uh, thinking about all this process of doing all this or I don't I'm only ta- thinking about it when I'm talking to you <laughs> I okay. live life one day at a time sometimes one week at a time I can't do a five year plan because no plan that I have made for myself has ever come good if it's a 3 month plan or a 6 month plan so let's start off with you know the IPL is coming and if i say okay i want to be this weight and i want to have this skin and i want to have this you know sizing by the IPL and if i start now i won't do it <laughs> so what i have to do is okay monday to friday i have to go to the gym four times and oh. then i'll do it for me at least individually i know a lot of people work very well with goals mm-hmm. right but for me individually Uh, when i go to bed at night i just think of whether this day has been useful for me and i have had a lot of days that i've wasted on the couch and i won't call it wasted or i've done nothing like a lot of downtime days you know mm-hmm. just watch netflix or amazon just read a book and just absolutely lie down when my husband's going to work in the morning and i'm in one position he comes back i'm in the same position surrounded by swiggy <laughs> covers <laughs> is that good that those are my downtime days because i'm so tired and brain fried right. that i need those days where i'm just cut off from the world and doing what i want and recharge yourself correct and doing mindless things right so those days excluded majority of my time when i go to sleep all i'm thinking about is has this day been useful to me have i made somebody happy have i done something for somebody have i done something for myself like today when my party called All she wants is for me to come and have her food, which is the best food in the world, according to me. Like if I could have one person's food for the rest of my life till I die, it would be my party's chapad, my party's food. Now today, all all I have in my mind is I want to go there, make her laugh a little bit, like talk rubbish to her, make sure that she laughs, spend that half an hour, one hour with her. I know that for an eighty-one-year-old woman, it makes a difference, right? So that is something with that will be on my to-do list. and then i come back i'm no saint it's not like oh i'm all about like charity and making pe- it's not like that but one good thing like just one and uh, coming to sports so we know that when you you mentioned in an interview that when you entered star sports that you were like a little clueless like you didn't understand things uh, a bit so now after these years how how is it now and uh, the knowledge you gained from there how would you uh, tell that uh, are you going you said you are strong like 6 yeah. years going strong <laughs> so how does it feel now compared to the day 1 day 1 was terrifying and year 7 is still intimidating so cricket is cricket is a field which you'll never be an expert on unless you've played on the highest level and you have the understanding of somebody like a ravi chandran ashwin <laughs> okay so when i'm when i'm on job and i'm speaking to the best cricketers from across the world who mm-hmm. the biggest legends of the game you will still feel a bit intimidated to ask a particular technical question okay. right and you are wondering if somebody else could have worded it better and you're always wondering if you could have done one step more right and i think that that intimidation factor is very important because if you feel too confident you mm-hmm. could get into the overconfident place okay. so that intimidation that little anxiety always makes me work harder it's like mr amita bachchan he said every every show that i go to or everything that i do i have butterflies in my stomach before i you know start doing my work and that butterflies in your stomach says that you care and the day you lose the, those butterflies in your stomach probably means it's time to shift gears and go somewhere else okay so it's still intimidating it's a it's a wee bit intimidating for me but i've learned to navigate my way through sport so especially cricket and kabaddi i've learned how to deal with the tough situations and ask the more technical questions but it's still a learning curve okay and which point uh, made you feel belonged uh, to this well i think there's no point there are people okay so i felt i felt very at home even in my first year at star sports because the team and my cricket experts made me feel that way I was so fortunate to have done my first few shows with Chika uh the late VB Chandrashekar um Hemang Badani Subramanyam Badrinath so on and so forth so what they did was they didn't judge me they taught me especially the super seniors Chika and VB sir I will always be grateful to them because they said don't worry ask me a question even if it doesn't make sense 
I will answer it in a way that I don't put you down in front of the camera. And when they don't react, people don't focus on your question. Only when they say, what are you asking me? Is when you remember what the anchor said. When they seamlessly go ahead, it just sort of goes away. So that's what they did for me and I'm eternally grateful for that. Please or something on Wikipedia, I would like to read that to you. Go for it. <laughs> I love I love people who do their research. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I was I was so happy to see this. So in your Wikipedia it's given that uh, she is one of the most popular sports journalists in India after Mayanti Langer. So that's in your Wikipedia. So <laughs> they didn't take anyone's name but yours. So how it's really does sweet. that feel? First correction, I'm not a sports journalist. Ah, okay. Presenter. Wikipedia, so I mean, yeah, yeah Wikipedia. But sports uh, I'm presenter. I'm a sports presenter. But I mean, being um, talked about in the same sentence as Mayanti Langer is definitely a huge compliment because she has been in the business for the length of my career. Uh, and uh, she's unbelievable. She has seen the biggest stages. She's talked to the who's who of the cricketing world. I mean, she also comes from a very illustrious cricket family. Her father-in-law is now the head of BCCI, right? So, um, she sort of, her dinner table conversations revolve around cricket. She's married to a cricketer as well. So, um, when you look at somebody who knows so much, but still maintains her humility, is composed, is happy to help people around, those are things I've picked up from her, apart from how to approach presenting in cricket. Okay. So, how does that feel? Are you happy to... You told now, oh, you asked me about the compliment and I spoke to you about mine theory. My, yes. <laughs> okay. This is what happens when you talk to a professional. No, it's... <laughs> Look. You gave me, uh, you gave me details about her, and you didn't tell me how. How did you feel about that? I'm not great at taking compliments. I'm, I, I don't know why it's a. I'm sure I don't know if you're like that, but I met a lot of girls who are like that. I can't say thank you. I'll, I'll say, um, I get a little uncomfortable. Okay. I, I'll say thank you sometimes, but then, when you put me on the spot and ask me, yeah. I wouldn't know how to respond to it. It feels great. <laughs> You'll have to strive harder is what I'll say. But you know, I automatically, my mind will not go to the, the fact that the spotlight is on me. But who's with me in that sentence? Which is why then I spoke yeah, about it. I saw that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I can't take compliments where you will. But why? Like when, um, was it like that from your childhood or only after entering the business? No, I've always it? been like that. I'm, I think I'm my worst critic. My best critique is my mom. She'll tell me the exact things I need to improve. I'm my worst critic. Because I don't think I'm happy with anything I do. I see, I will see this interview and I'll be like, why have you answered this question this way? Couldn't you have chosen a better word? <laughs> Couldn't you have said something nicer? But that I feel is, it doesn't make me unhappy. It just helps me get better. Okay. I'm my worst critic, but in a positive way. I don't know how that <laughs> works, but it helps me get better. We've seen you always like, Bhavna Vandale Vandha Supra Arpanga. Like, she'll be like a doll on the Really? Street. <laughs> yes. We've always seen you with the best clothes, best makeup and best hair. So let's talk about Bhavna as a fashionista. How do you <laughs> choose things? What is your style? What is your style statement? I choose things that are my style. You, your question had the answer. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I think I have a very good understanding. I never give myself compliments, but this one I'll really give myself a compliment. I have a very good understanding of my own body. Mm. So I know what looks good on me and what does not look good on me. And I think it's very essential that everybody, be it a man, woman, boy, girl, party, tata, whoever it is, to have an understanding of their body. Just look at yourself in the mirror. Okay, and... Look at what body type you have and what suits your personality. So I know what colors work for me. I know what cuts work for me. When I go to a designer, I'm telling them, this is what I want. This is what I want. Can you make it for me? And I have really collaborative designers. Very clear. Even with sport, I'm like that. The outfit may look fabulous, but it just won't be for me. And an outfit will be really simple, but it looks stunning for me. So it's just that understanding. And I, I keep my, I do my own makeup. I've never, the biggest of stages. Really? Yes. I do my own makeup. Uh -huh. um, because uh, 
I I don't have the patience to sit in that makeup chair for over an hour. People love doing that. I don't know. I can't do it. I can't do it because it. I get very anxiety. Uh, anxiety ridden. Like I get very anxious. Plus, I also get fidgety. Okay. So I I can't I can't deal with it. So I when I'm uh, especially when I do star sports work, I get there. Um, I don't get there very early. <laughs> I don't get there very early. I get there and end to end. from the time i go there with no makeup no hair done till the time i get ready i can do it all in 30 minutes 30 minutes okay just 30 30 yes and people in bombay will attest to it so i have this um, we call them thais in maharashtra thais mm-hmm. means uh, older sister like akka mm-hmm. so she would come and she they are also so efficient they know my hair by now so there's this one thai case of thai who comes and does my hair and she will get it done in 12 minutes and i will parallelly be doing my makeup and then my trials are already done with my stylist early on so they give me an outfit i'm done my accessories ready to go in 30 minutes so when you do live television and it's a long tournament you cannot sit in that makeup chair for so long anyway i digress coming back to <laughs> style statement i keep, i know what works for me and that's all i do as sometimes i'm i'm also a little cautious so you won't see me wear something that's completely out there that is the disadvantage So I don't think I can really call myself a fashionista because I don't try the latest trends. I was about to ask. That. Yeah, I don't try the latest trends. I'm not a big um, brand lover. I I okay. wear what looks good on me. Okay. That's so it. there's nothing like a go-to brand that you look for or um only so when it comes to makeup I would probably buy a lot of drugstore brands which are really inexpensive. but there will be two or three which work so well for me but will which will be the big brands okay. so it's always a toss up even with in terms of bags or shoes my running shoes will be branded because that's for health okay. but then my big heels will be branded mm. but then my platforms and my house chappals will be 150 rupees <laughs> i think it's very important to achieve a balance in life because in today's world it's so easy to get absorbed into this whole brand phenomenon and you lose yourself in it and i feel it's very addictive it's almost like tattoos right yes. it's very addictive mm-hmm. so you don't know where you're spending your money and why you're spending that much money um so i think it's always good to have a balance and uh, my voice of reason is always my father who has the first view of my bank balance <laughs> he oh. maintains my accounts okay. so if i if i make a big purchase i get a call mm-hmm. or a message the next minute saying, even now even today. even today so okay. he'll message me or call me and say what is it first he'll ask me what is it okay. now if he finds it to be reasonable it's okay otherwise there's conversation that's pending <laughs> what was the last time like you had a conversation when was the last time you had a conversation i think i went abroad and i asked my mother to put in my mother's very chill she'll say go spend it huh. she's one of those i understood uh, her she's by yolo yeah. <laughs> she's very yolo she will do it as well so most of the times we're controlling her <laughs> saying what are you doing why are you spending so much she's a bindas mood but my father is a little more cautious and i think i've taken up to my father but even so sometimes when i i think when i was abroad or something and i went to one of these outlet stores i just went on swiping left right and center to be fair 70% of what i bought was for family and friends because it was so inexpensive i thought it would make great birthday gifts so okay. i sorted on birthday gifts for a year okay, okay. but he, i went berserk i mean so my father just messaged me he didn't even call he said are you using your card <laughs> Okay. because i can see a lot of deductions in 3 hours so i said no i'm in an outlet mall he said yeah just be a little careful <laughs> that's yeah it's And always good to have a person to remind us great. about things i love voices of reason i i really think that's they'll they'll keep your life on track right. <laughs> and do you how do you handle chennai and mumbai because Chennai is a bit slower compared to Mumbai, and Mumbai is just eating up things like this. So, do you feel any difference at first, or I just think go for work and come back? To be really honest, Mumbai is slightly more professional, okay. just in the way they work, hmm. than Chennai is. Chennai is more family. right with family you don't have that much of professionalism and mumbai is mumbai is i come i do my work we hang out and maybe have dinner or drinks if we're free but most of the times we're not 
because we have to travel long distances and be back with family right so it's usually there are they are great people and i forged wonderful relationships in bombay but it's very professional you come in and do your work and you get out but in chennai it's more conversational it's more chilled out mm. so i like a bit of both because i have both if i was in one city i'll definitely miss the other and uh, talk about your friends in mumbai take us through what do you do with your friends there you know i never had an opportunity to have friends in the media here it's not like i didn't want to have friends here the the life of a freelancer i feel is very lonely in terms of yeah i do think that because when you do corporate events you meet one client every day right and then when you do work like when i was doing work for super singer at least i used to come in on the day of the shoot and then leave the next day to bombay where my husband stayed okay so i literally didn't have time to forge relationships where everybody else in chennai would have their down days down time and they would catch up i would never be there for any rap party i would never be there for any awards function after party because i'll take a flight out okay. or that little bit of time that i'll have i'll want to spend with family mm. so i didn't have that but in bombay i had the opportunity because i live in bombay and the days i don't come to chennai i have down time in bombay oh. so then i started hanging out with my work friends and we are a crazy bunch <laughs> <laughs> all of us have grown up a little bit so we can't be very crazy but uh, i think i remember my first couple of years in star sports we've had a lot of late nights because if you finish only at 1 or 2 am mm. and then i'll call my husband and i'll say hey do you want to come out and he's like i've already been sleeping for 2 hours <laughs> what are you talking about i work at 9 am but he's chilled out so he'd be like you go have fun as long as you have a safe ride back home and bombay we we probably go back to my house mostly we are at my place at the expense of my husband or we're in some other friend's place or all of these guys stay in hotels people who come from different parts of the country for work so we'd go to somebody's hotel room and then have like a big dance party or just like order food party sometimes we're chilling and uh, yeah it's it's a lot of fun when everybody gets together awesome so when i talk to you i understand you have a very balanced life like you are you are more of a sorted person like you understand what you do you know what you're doing so uh let me ask this so your upbringing how much has it helped you in these things to uh, have a balanced life uh, to understand the career and to take bigger decisions in life so please great please. question divya i think it has everything to do with my upbringing and not just my upbringing i think it has everything to do with the people that are traveling this journey with me uh, so i have friends who don't treat me like a public personality at all they don't know what i'm doing um they are not very active on instagram so when i meet them it's like i'm with them in school or college they make fun of me they keep me grounded when it comes to family nobody treats me any differently <laughs> if i go back in my room is unclean which it is today i'll get a big yelling from my mother saying you know you're 30 plus what's wrong with you can't you at least keep your room clean so i do my cleaning and when i'm in bombay i'm a proper proper wife when i need to be and i'm a proper you know um professional when i need to be so i i maintain my house i you know sit around with my help and we do the sabzi bhaji all of that together <laughs> okay. there is no special treatment in any aspect of my life okay. and i think that's wonderful the minute you start thinking that you're very important mm. or you need to be treated a little differently because of the kind of work you do mm -hmm. i think that's that's where you tell yourself you're special which i i don't think bodes well for most people i don't think it works very well for me and for a lot of my friends who are in the public uh, space as well they lead extremely normal lives i'm talking about the cricket sports presenters okay now i don't know too much about the people in the media business in chennai but i'm talking about the sports presenters in bombay who i've had the opportunity to interact on a personal level with so they lead very normal lives and i think it really works because you realize that you're just doing a job the difference between my job and my husband's job is what i do can be seen by the public what he does is not seen by the public exactly. apart from that we're both just striving to be better in our respective fields so that's and that's what i've been told at home as well and thank you for doing this and it means a lot to us uh, you agreed to do this podcast and it means so much to me thank i had a, 
I had a lovely time in this podcast, Divya, and I want to say when you smile, your eyes smile, so you should smile a lot more. Thank you. And thank you for the nuanced research into my life that you brought various aspects uh, of in this interview. It's been fun because I now realize that I share a lot more of my life when I speak in English. So maybe I shouldn't do too many you English interviews. You should do English interviews. Because when I do Tamil interviews, I've never spoken about half the things that I've spoken about in this interview. So, so it was a great opportunity. Yeah, so thank you, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you All so much. All the best. Much, man. Yeah.